Welcome to Street Apologist Live. My name is Vocab Malone, your host. Today is Thursday, April 27th. What's the time? The time is 9.26 p.m. here Pacific, and I'm very excited to be joined by my man, Mr. Phil Fox, as we discuss the most recent invasion by IUIC into the reservations. We'll talk about it tonight on Street Apologist. All right, woo! There we go. What's up? Welcome to Street Apologist Live, Mr. Phil Fox. You know what it is. This is the program where we serve the underserved and look into the overlooked. And uh, you're a uh, regular uh, in the live chat. You do your own beautiful ministry as well. We've been friends for a while. Now everyone else knows and loves you. And I just want to welcome you to the program. It's been a while. Had you on before, and I've done some stuff on yours as well. But let me give you some... <laughs> Ooh, that was a little loud. That was a little loud. But <laughs> tell people who you are, Mr. Phil Fox. Nidosha Mabehe, Mirishi Ma'i Hagatesh Hetz. My name is uh, Defeats the Enemy, um, but my English name is Phil Fox. Uh, and uh, I am uh, coming to you uh, from the land of the Anishinaabe and the Potawatomi, uh, which is southeastern Michigan. The historic lands of, of those tribes uh, and um, I uh, am a proud member first of all of uh, the, the the kingdom of Jesus Amen. Uh, but I'm also a member of the Mandan, Hidatsa and Arikara tribes also known as the MHA Amen. nation and uh, I am a member of the uh, low cap clan and also uh, a child of the uh, the prairie chicken clan so uh so big up to my my earthly native heritage um and uh to my people uh on the fort berthel indian reservation in north dakota so uh so yeah so i appreciate you vocab for having me on and also i just appreciate this opportunity brother well yes yeah, so let's talk about it so i sent you a link to a news article what were your first thoughts what do you think of this <laughs> Uh, I, I don't. I, I actually don't remember where I said it. That's all right. Um, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring it up. Yeah, I, I don't remember where I said it, and it was very early on. But I, I, I said, and I think it was even a conversation with you, Vocab, that if these guys actually went to a reservation, because a lot of their propaganda stuff was at like, um, at these like. Uh, you know, it's like city type powwows, you know, like urban, urban Indian centers and those types of things. So like a lot of their early videos were like at powwows in Chicago in in like all of these, you know, sort of urbanized places. Um, but I always said that if they actually went to the reservation, that they would be laughed off the reservation. And that's pretty much what happened. You know what I mean? Why and do you know, th what's what's the main reason you said that that they would be <clears throat> laughed off the reservation? Why do you why would you say that? Well, because um, because you know un unfortunately you know historically um, most of your you know what there's kind of this you know it's 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 kind of like the 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 the, the Spanish speaking uh, you know Mexicans versus the Spanglish speaking uh, Latinos you know where there's kind of this it, it's almost like a cultural it's like it's kind of like a cultural divide mm -hmm. but there's a there's this this thing with with a lot of urban urban na uh, urban natives uh they're not close to the cultural centers and usually what you get with these with their with the urban uh native american sort of communities is you get a bunch of conglomerate uh traditions and a, a lot of different people from from different culture groups uh, and different tribes that come together so there's really no continuity within the the understanding of of who they are culturally and historically and so there's almost this 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 identity uh, or searching of identity trying to find out what their identity is and and so they sort of come together with these things but when you go to a reservation that's where the cultural center is so that's where you have most of your tribal eldership that's where a lot of the stories are kept that's where a lot of the culture is kept 
that's where a lot of the, the traditions and the ceremonies are kept is is usually on those reservation centers. Mm-hmm. And that's where that's where you're going to find a bulk of the culture. So uh, going to a urban community center or, or urban powwow, if you will, uh, or, you know, that's what we call them powwows, but they're they're more celebrations. Um, that's not like a ceremonial type thing. That's not like a some kind of sacred thing. But, you know, you go onto the reservation and now you're entering into sort of, you know, quote unquote, holy, holy land or, you know, uh, there's there you should at least have reverence and understanding to where you're going and, and what what you're walking into. And so when you start to make some of those claims as you forget who you are and you don't know who you are and and this is really who you are and trying to make these really loose connections <laughs> scripturally uh it just it just assumes that these people are stupid or dumb and they don't really understand who they are and they've lost culture and they they've lost these things so yeah. that's why i really said that you know if they really went on to a reservation that this propaganda stuff will not float because First of all, what they don't understand is that we have survived, you know, several hundred years of colonization already. And so we understand and know what colonization tactics look like, sound like, feel like, and are like. And so what they don't realize is that they are using forms of of colonization tactics um, by just by default because of because of the way that they're trying to approach it. Yeah. Imagine going to someone's. Uh, native place you know historically theirs and they've been in touch with these things for millennia and then telling them hey you don't know who you are let's tell you the whole the whole thing when you really think about it is really bizarre like you've you've lost your ethnic heritage we did too but now we, we now we know who we are. We're we're claiming you're part of us so we're going to wake you up. I mean honestly this actually goes back to um, these claims go back to old uh, explorer, colonialist, and Puritan missionary days. For example, Jews in America, or probabilities that the Americans are of that race. This is one of the books that started it all, Thomas Thorogood. He, he, he did this, very popular. You know, it's got one of those little generic covers because it's out of print. But this mm-hmm. is the, the actual way it looks. This and this is this is all about here. Let me share some proofs. And he was he was a, he was an evangelical uh, Christian. You know, he's a he was a pastor and all that. And uh, he writes and he's like, hey, let me tell you how these folks are actually uh, probably lost Israelites. And here's here's the evidence. And uh, he wasn't the first one. This is one of the early popular ones. I actually have a blog about this kind of thing up at theshieldsquad.com. I encourage people to look at. But, you know, these guys are actually picking up some of those same arguments. Now, let's read the article that prompted us to do this live stream. Let me just jump over here real quick and see what the screen is going to show. Just a second here. Uh, just give me a second, guys. This is going to... Take a, a minute just for me to get this right, but don't worry, we'll, we'll get it right here. Okay, put this there, and then bring up Mr. Phil Fox back again. Uh, who do we need to give a shout out in the live chat to, by the way? Oh, I see a bunch of folks in the live chat. I see Built for Speed, and let's see, Nate 2D2, of course, all the mods. Shout out to the mod squad. Uh, let's see, Man Who Plays with E, uh, Tex42 Chick. Man, Truth Defenders, Walsh. Man, there's a bunch of y'all in the chat. Thanks for showing up, y'all. CMB early on, Desmond Ingram. Man. Yes, indeed. And everyone, just remember to pray for folks in the urban apologetics community. There's a lot of prayer needs in the in the community right now. And uh, I just pray that you, you keep a, a lot of the brothers and sisters and their families in prayer. Okay, so let's take a look sure. at this this article here. Uh, this is from the daily dot dot com, and here it's a screenshot from from uh, TikTok, one from Josie Tawa, and another one that's <clears throat> Lil. <clears throat> hold on, I always have trouble. Lily Indiano Glassy Sue. I, I, I see Sue in there. That's uh, I see Sue. <laughs> 
And then it says, uh, them Israelites came to the reservation and got escorted off by the police. They came with an agenda because they feel like they are the first people being ignorant and disrespectful. That's sad. And then they show uh, the flyer here in the article. It's in the top. Now, I'm going to read the article, but uh, off jump, any comments so far? Maybe (laughs) help people understand what they're even looking at, brother? Yeah, so the... um, uh, this is the you know the your typical propaganda package that they that the Hebrew Israelites have. Uh, they just they just showcase the you know some of their propaganda stuff as far as what they feel would be relevant for Native American folk. Uh, you know, so their their thing is you know one of their main things is oh you know look here this is why you wear fringes. Yeah, and, um, and they, they love that. Yeah. So, so well, actually, let me show you. A... Since you brought it up, let me show you. This is from a, uh, not this. Hold on. Just give me a second, everyone. This is from a, a Hebrew Israelite uh, page that I follow, and this was separate. He's not. He's not in IUIC, but on his page, he had actually put up some Mesoamerican and, and indigenous people's clothes. And Mr. Phil Fox, can you can you see this? <laughs> And yeah. do you see the the circles? What they what he's yeah. like he sees he's, he's like trying to show. Yeah, look, see right here. It proves it, man. You see the little <laughs> arrows yeah, with right the on, little, yeah. little hands. <laughs> Let me show you yeah. another one here. Let me show you another one here. <laughs> yeah, there's there's oh, another okay. there's some more. See, yeah. and it's funny you, you see like, you know these are images drawn by obvious Europeans. Mm-hmm. You know, look in the background here. You know what I mean? The, so mm-hmm. these are all, and that's another interesting thing is notice uh, these almost always, what these images they show and stuff are always post-colonial. You know, they're post right. they're Colombian. They're not pre-Columbian. Right. Uh, I think that's from a different set of things. And here's the, the last one I got. But it's just the same kind of impulse. Right. That they're trying to show. <laughs> Imagine yeah. he's drawing little hands, showing little hands. He's got yeah. the fringes. It proves it. So yeah. I mean, I just wanted to show you. It's exactly what you're saying. That's exactly what they do. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, look, there's fringes. Um, so hey, this proves it, people. Right. You know. Uh, but go no, go, go ahead. I'm switching back to 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 the other screen. Yeah. No. So I mean, it's just it's just funny because you know, um, not and that's just the thing is is. For me, it's always like not everything about Native culture is this mystical, magical, you know, piece of of, of history. Like the practicality of fringes goes, it, it, it's just that. It's just a practical thing because we didn't have technology to sew. Like we didn't have uh, high forms of, of metallurgy and, and making needles and those types of things. Like we had rudimentary stuff where we would we'd make stuff out of bone. Uh, to be able to to pierce and and create you know fabric and stuff like that and and to tie stuff together, but the easiest thing to do was to create these two pieces of hide, bring them together, and then just basically rip the the ends and then tie them together to and then if essentially it made fringes, and then yes we would decorate them, but there was no spiritual significance behind that. It was just a practical thing. So again. That that's what I mean by they have this 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 colonial propagandist mentality, um, you know, to try to over <laughs> to over spiritualize every single aspect of of the things that we do. Yeah, and it's like it, imagine the 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 arrogance. We're going to tell you what this means, right? You know, we, like we're going to tell you. In radar apologetics, Rabbi Eduardo brings up a good point. Fringe has got to be on the corners. Does it work? Because what does Numbers 1538 say? Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So it's not like these are like biblical, you know, mandated fringes. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, uh, bikers, you know, bikers wear those... You know, like mm-hmm. they'll ride a Harley Davidson and Hell's Angels. They might have the, t- 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 yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mean, the list goes on of people that might wear fringes. I mean, that's just. <laughs> but okay, let's 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 take a look here. Let's let's get through this article because uh, I think people are going to find some 
interesting stuff in this article. And then we're going to look at some of the IUIC reactions. So in case you haven't caught on, what, what's going on is IUIC is Israel United in Christ. They're a One West group who uh, likes to go harass people on street corners all across America wearing purple and yellow, purple and gold. And they got bored of harassing people by corner markets, so instead they decided to go harass people at the reservation. So they're actually going mm. on to the reservations here. And they're handing out, uh, I guess what you might call, uh, people-specific propaganda. So this is the idea, this is designed specifically to wake, to wake up the indigenous people to who they are. Let, let Nathaniel tell you who you are. You know, I know you're descended from, from a, a chief so-and-so, but we'll tell you who you really are. I know that you're descended right. from, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm saying, it's like, there's people, it's like they <laughs> go back in their lineage. And so here's what it says, the so-called blacks and Hispanics are the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the children of the slave trade. Uh, and right underneath says Native Americans. The prophet warned us that if we broke the commandments, we would be punished as a people. Read Deuteronomy 28, 1568. This did not happen to any other nation on earth. Native Americans are a strong people. And by the way, even that's ridiculous. I mean, Native American, uh, like that's actually a thing amongst themselves, a uh, nation. Like they're talking about Native American like it's a, there's a nation. Nation, but, right. But, but I mean, I have a book. And this, the reason I got this, because a lot of Hebrews like to use this book, it's literally called 500 Nations. 500 Nations. <laughs> right. Well, what do you guys think this book's about? Right. An illustrated history of North American Indians. Like, it's, mo I mean, so they're like just grouping all in, into one, and they don't even make them all gad. They got some as Reuben. Here's what it says. Native right. Americans are a strong people, and by bloodline, a chosen people according to the Holy Bible. They are known as the tribe of Gad in the scriptures. So every tribe is actually Gad. Except right, for every Seminoles who are Reuben, so every yeah, tribe. It doesn't the, matter. The, that's the thing, though. Is is what what Seminoles though? See, that's the thing. Is so it's ridiculous. A, a bulk of the Seminoles actually went west and are now in Oklahoma, and what you have in in the Florida region are the remnant, and there were a mix of the Seminole and the Creek, and also. Uh, Muskegee. Escaped slaves. Yeah, escaped yep. slaves. Mm -hmm. the, 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 what, yep. some, you can read so, about that here. Uh, black Indians. This yep. is, the Hebrews like trying to use this book to prove something, but it doesn't prove what they're trying to it prove. prove anything. No. Th this is a decent book, has some good stuff in it, but it doesn't say what they're trying to make it say. It's just talking right. about black folks living among Native Americans, basically. That's the basic essence yeah. of that book. I have their books. They get on this. That's that's why I have these. But here's what it says. Um, <laughs> they are known in the Bible as a tribe of Gad in scriptures. Deuteronomy 33, 20, and of Gad, he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion, fierce warriors, in parentheses. I mean, it's actually mm -hmm. just a stereotype. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm not... Every Native American a fierce warrior. I'm just saying it's a stereotype, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, yeah. I mean, because now I mean, like to, you know, to, to be brutally honest, uh, you know, my my tribe, uh, the the tribe that I am, I grew up as. So my I have the three the three tribes that are on my reservation, and but the tribe that I grew up learning the most about, and actually where I the language and stuff that I speak is the Hidatsa language. The Hiratsas historically were not a strong war tribe. So we we were like right in the middle of the great Sioux nation and the and the Sioux, uh, and they don't call themselves that. They call themselves the Oyate. Um, but the Oyate, they had several bands uh, of, of themselves uh, and we were sort of like right in the middle of them. Uh, and so um, so we sort of had, it wasn't protection, but we had a good relationship with them. And so the Sioux had a, a very, they were very known for their warfare. So, so kind of like how was, Canada, no one's afraid of Canada's army, but no one's going to invade right. Canada because the United States is right south of the border. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much. I mean, but see, that's the thing is we trade, we traded a lot with them because we, we were a, a, uh, a agricultural tribe. Right. So we we knew actually one of the uh, there's a bean that's named after the tribe. There's there's called a Hidatsa bean. Hmm. And so uh, so that was one of the things that we've learned to to cultivate and to you know we we understood crop rotations and those types of things.
So it's almost like, you know, these guys watched Spaghetti Westerns and just wrote, wrote this flyer. He said, look, right. he dwelt as a lion, fierce warrior. So that's their interpretation. And yeah. Tareth the Arm. So look how they, in, they interpret Tareth the Arm, Phil Fox. The Blood mm-hmm. Pact or Oath. Right. Yeah, that's Boy Scout stuff. They, they, <laughs> that's the stuff that they learned when they went to Summer Boy Scout. <laughs> They, what they, do you, they cut, why do you say their, that? Cut their fingers, cut their fingers, and they they touch fingers, and now we're blood brothers. Yeah, I mean, is like, is that something that cool every no, is, is, no. Is everyone does? I mean, come on. I don't know of any tribe that that does that. I don't. I've never heard of that before. I mean, and, and here's a and here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. Is so so when I speak right. So I, I speak with, of course, I don't know the, the, I don't know every single tribe. Yeah. Who does? Who but, does? But here's, but here is my, here is my claim though, is that see, I had a lot of exposure to a lot of different tribes mm-hmm. because I, I sang on the powwow trail. Mm. So I would go, I would literally went all over the country with multiple drum groups throughout my singing career. I still sing this, this drum isn't just a hanging piece. I actually use this drum. I sing with this drum. Oh yeah, I saw some old pictures of you, didn't I? And some old videos. Yeah. I yeah. forgot. Uh, you know, it's weird. I for- actually forgot about those. Uh, he's not lying, yeah. by the way. <laughs> just, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually so, forgot yeah, about I mean, that. You yeah. can actually go to my channel, and I still have videos up of when yeah. when I would go around with with the drum group that I sang with, yeah, uh, Yellowface. Yeah. I also sang with a couple other drum groups, uh, and so. But that's the thing is, so I got exposed and I'd have conversations and, and, and that's the, one of the beauties of, of being, uh, at powwows and stuff is you get exposed to all these different cultures right. and yeah, not everything is like a, you know, we're not sitting there swapping cultural stories all the time, but you do get exposed to some right, of their, right, right. their, their thinking and, and, and how they, you know, uh, that's, live out their culture. That's a funny way to put it though. You said Boy, Boy Scout stuff. <laughs> it is so. <laughs> so yeah. So I don't. I mean, I I've, I've never heard of anybody trying to do a blood pact with me because I've had a lot of friends that I called brothers on the Palo Trail and that kind of right. stuff. But never, ever, ever have I. You know, it, even even when I was a kid. Look like, at the next one, bro. It gets even worse with the crown of feathers, the oh, royal geez. crown of feathers, or the war bonnet. Yeah, and that's another. Not every not every tribe wore the wore a war bonnet either. It I mean, was only geez. some. I mean, if, yeah. like it was only. I mean, it's like it's sort of the. From what I know, it's sort of the exception. Right. It's it, it's prominent and it's well known. We see it. You know right. what I mean? But because it's so kind of iconic, you know. A hey, shout out to Brandon for the super yes, chat. Brandon. You got Bumblebee jumps up when you give a super chat. So appreciate that. Nice. But I mean, this is like they watch a spaghetti western, and yeah. you know, I wonder if they even know the gentleman that they put on their flyer. Do they know who that is? You yeah, know, I doubt it. Deuteronomy thirty. Yeah. Well, the heads of the people were the tribes of Ephraim, Puerto Rico, <laughs> and Manasseh, and Cuba. Jeez. God executed judgment among the ten tribes of Israel that migrated to the Americas sometime after the Assyrian captivity, circa seven twenty two BC. Brother, that no, literally. I, I love that, that. This is like literally Mormonism right here. This is the I love book it. of Mormon. I love it though. I love it though. You know why? Because they gave us a date. Yeah, like they gave us a date, but here's here's the thing is so they're they saying you know Assyria, Assyria conquers and they come over, I guess. Yeah, so but they the they gave thank you thank you IUIC for giving us the date. You know why? Because there's proof. There's a there's an article that actually Dr. Brown mentioned in his debate mm. uh, yeah. of the the Anzic child that was found in Mon- in modern day Montana, mm-hmm. and the Anzic child links. 80% of, of Native Americans from North and South Central, North, Central, and South America. But he is dated to 12,000 years from present. And so my people, the, the ancient Clovis people were here way before that date. So thank you for the date, IUIC, because just that date itself body bags their entire... Mm-hmm. Native American, but also it, it doesn't just collapse the GAD part because guess what? All mm. these other so called South American, you know, whatever right. tribes that are trying to link them to, because Clovis, the Clovis child in Montana, is also linked to all the DNA in all of the, the, the lineage down in South America as well. So there goes half your chart just by this the finding yep. of this one kid, Anzic One is what he's called. And you can go look it up, science. Yeah, so here, here's yeah. a good Excellent book, book, The Origins yeah. of Native Americans by Crawford Americans. Yep. on Cambridge. This is a helpful book. 
And then actually, you know, since they ripped off a lot of LDS myth, uh, here's a former LDS guy who's also a uh, molecular uh, geneticist oh, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon Simon G. Southerton, Native Americans DNA in the Mormon Church. Great, great title here. Losing a lost tribe. Um, molecular biology. And uh, this is great stuff. That's especially, uh, I forget what I said especially was, but it's molecular biology. But this is some good stuff that helps put a lie to that because, you know, they try to use this old Mormon stuff. Now, they don't always, uh, they're not always aware of it, but let me show you how old this stuff goes back. An introduction to Mormon, a Native American prophet. This is by a, a Mormon writer from like the 70s or 80s. Shout out to Radar Apologetics for the super chat. Thank you very much. Look, imagine a Mormon book actually called Introduction to Mormon, a Native American Prophet. And I pick these up every now and then. This is another Mormon apologetics book, Early America and the Book of Mormon. It tries to give proof to this idea. Here's a newer one. I picked up from Desiree Bookstores. An LDS Guide to Mesoamerica. So that goes down more south. But this is the kind of thing that they're doing. And now you, I see is giving bad, like actually worse ver- versions of these arguments. Uh, here's what it says. The blessings that Gad, the Native Americans would receive, would be the first part of the land, the main land of America, according to Second Estra. So <laughs> fulfills the prophecy, supposedly, and the Apocrypha there. And then look, it lit on the bottom, Native Americans still wear fringes. And then they sew these pictures of modern day on the very right. bottom of the flyer. Like this is going to win someone over who who... You know, if let's say that um, let's say that I'm 80 years old and I live on the reservation, mm-hmm. think right. about the people I knew when I was a, a child. Right. Like so. What, what, so if if you're 80, uh, let's see when would you be born then? Uh, like let's say let's say that's let's just go. Let's say you're born in the 40s or something, right? Yeah. Let's say you're born in the 40s. You could have known people easily who were alive in the 1800s. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that far off. Do you you guys understand? And then they're going to come and be like, oh, you don't really know who you are. You're actually Israelites because you wear fringes. Look at this flyer that Nathaniel gave me. (laughs) Yeah. What? What? Yeah, that's the thing too, Vocab. You know, it's funny because you, it's funny you say that because I can actually trace my lineage back to the early, early 1800s. I, I can go back right now just, just off the top of my head. And I can go back to my six time great grandfather. His name was, he didn't have a name. Uh, 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 a European name. His name was uh, Chicken Can't Swim, and he had he had like six wives though. Chicken and, Can't uh, Swim had six wives. Yep. Dang, Chicken yep. Can't Swim. Okay, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get it. Yeah. Hey, maybe, so... hey, maybe he was an Israelite. They all they all want to be polygamous. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. And and most of it was you know most of it was ceremonial, but he had you know with he had two. He had one wife who 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 uh, passed away, and then he had, um, uh, and then he. It's, most of it was was ceremonial, so it was, it was actually just, um, you know, he he carried them, uh, mo- mainly as helpers. But uh, he had a, like a main wife, and then I guess they would sort of be the idea of like concubines type thing. Right. Um. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so, th- so that's the thing is, so I can go back to my six times so that's that for me that's that's seven generations eight eight generations Man, that's that's pretty epic um and so but these epic. guys are going to tell these guys are going to tell me who can't go back past their maybe their great maybe great great so mo- most of these guys don't they can't go back that far mm. and but yet they're going to try to tell me who i am <clears throat> and so these and these are the things and so my kids they can go back like nine generations Right. So, but that's the thing. So, I mean, how how are these folks gonna gonna tell us? And we and and that's the thing is they're just assuming that we don't understand and know our our origin stories because we have creation stories too. We and have and, we and have think about what it's, think about what it's based upon. Um, one of our leaders got a vision in the seventies from an angel of the Lord or something, and wrote it down on a piece of cardboard. And we've been copying ever since that piece of cardboard. And since he had this vision in Harlem in the seventies about you being on our chart, we know it's right. Shout out to right. man who plays with E, who uh, says he's Cree. Steve Morrow, we don't have to answer this. I just want to show. 
<laughs> Please stop with these kind of guns. Is this native a Freemason? I notice his hands keep making Freemason hands. <laughs> but no, he's not. But you know, do you know who you know who is a Freemason? William Crowdy, the founder, one of the founders of uh, the Hebrew Israelite religion. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, just uh, okay. So got a got a couple uh, other keep keep people here. Uh, Texas Chick says, uh, yeah, and we can ride um, horses without handlers. I don't know if you, if you guys know uh, what they're talking about there because what you had is Nathaniel being rode around at the latest Passover <laughs> yeah. with a handler. Right. It's like, bro, right. what is happening here? Okay, they, so let's white white looking handlers at that. Oh yeah, I think they love that though. They, they think it's a sign. Led by the white man. Yeah, they think it's a sign of of, of things oh, to come. Geez. You know, they're they're slave or something. Ignorant and disrespectful. Fringe hate groups. Hey, get the play on words mm-hmm. there. Fringe. Eh? Hands mm-hmm. off the anti-native flyers on Lakota reservations. We do not want you here. Tricia Crimmins uh, posted April twentieth, twenty twenty three, and then updated uh, later that day. Okay, TikTokers say in recent viral videos. So these videos did go viral. I watch them they, they did go viral that uh nice. members of an extremist religious group handed out anti-native american flyers on native reservations the black israelites are a, reli- a fringe religious movement associated with anti-semitism and forced segregation members of the group allegedly visited pine ridge south dakota and rosebud oregon both reservations that are home to the lakota people on april 10th native tiktokers say that the group disseminated anti-native materials in rosebud in pine ridge black israelites were escorted out of the reservation by tribal police the ogla uh, the oglala oglala Oglala, yeah. Oglala, the Oglala Sioux Tribe Department of Public Safety did not immediately respond to the Daily Dot's request for comment. So I'm going to keep on going, but uh, anything so far? Thank you for helping me with pronunciation, bro. <clears throat> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, before we went live, uh, I told you about my own uh, <laughs> my own story of of having to have some fringe group uh, escorted off the reservation. Uh, so we had something similar happen back in 2006 with the uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, that mm. crazy fringe group, uh, and they were going to try to come and and uh, protest uh, uh, the death of of one of our our veterans. And so um, that's the thing is that you know we have we have tribal sovereignty and we we have the ability to escort people out who we view as dangerous and and I don't know if this I don't remember if this article. Uh, says it but it it said it it sounded like they were at least flashing maybe firearms uh or weapons and those types of things but they deemed it unsafe uh and i mean and and that's the thing is it's not just the wild west out because um you know what we'll what we'll get into a little bit later you know they try to make it as if they're you know it's just a lawless type of thing and it's some kind of conspiracy theory to come after them and people didn't want them there and all this kind of stuff and you know, that's just that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I mean, if, if people see that it, it or at least and knowing that these folks, how they can get and how belligerent they can get the, the Hebrew Israelites when they're pushed on their doctrine, uh, because they they go from, you know, hey, let me tell you about this. And, and mm-hmm. if, if if you seem like you're, oh, yeah, let me tell me about that. But the moment you start to push back, then they start to get belligerent. They start to get they, you know, very hostile. And, and you can even a, see it in some of the videos we're going to watch later on when they start using racial slurs against the natives. Yes. Again, now, yeah. Yeah. Now, now they right. say they say that uh, it's a lie that they didn't flash any firearms, uh, but the 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 folks uh, there in the reservation seem to think they did. So they're basically both saying they're lying. Um, I know that Hebrew Israelite groups, some of them do carry weapons. However. And I'm just I'm just putting it out there from what I know. Mm-hmm. I do not know of IUIC to carry weapons. So I, I wasn't there. I don't know. I didn't see. I don't know for sure what happened. I can see how these mistakes could be made. And there's sometimes people w- will have a certain kind of weapon, but maybe it's not a firearm. I've seen that happen, right. too, with a, a group I was dealing with here where they had other weapons like uh, night sticks, and they would carry them to camp and things like that. And then they would, they like, we don't have any weapons, but what, what they meant was we don't have firearms. And I don't know exactly what happened. I do know that historically, IUIC doesn't do the firearm thing, 
But I don't know. The people seem to think that they did, and I, I don't trust IUIC. <laughs> I could see right. people on the mm-hmm. reservation making a mistake, but I know the IUIC. I don't view them as truth tellers. Uh, but right. but I'm just saying historically, I do. I, I know ISUPK carries weapons. I know that Sakari carries weapons, and I know GMS is anti carrying weapon. The only weapon mm. they carry is their bad breath. But uh, could, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I love you, GMS. I love you, GMS. I'm sorry. I love you, GMS. Okay. Okay, here we go now. Continuing down, let's look at this. Uh, Native TikTokers say that... Oh, we already read that part. Okay. In one Mm -hmm. TikTok posted on April 10th, Native TikToker Emma Blacksmith captured men wearing purple and yellow shirts with a black Israelite logo standing outside Big Pat's convenience store on the Pine Ridge Reservation. Big Pat's employees confirmed the incident in a brief phone interview with the... Oh, Big Bats. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I read it wrong. That's my fault. With the Daily Dot. Them Israelites came to the reservation, got escorted off by the police. Blacksmith wrote in the video's overlay text that came with an agenda because they feel they are the first people. Being ignorant and disrespectful, that's sad. Black Israelites believe that Native Americans are part of the tribe of Gad and originate from Israel. Many Native people find this belief offensive as they are Native to North America. Black Israelites, and isn't it crazy, like, the Hebrew Israelites, like, don't call me black, right? right. And, um, and, you know, they'll, they'll say that. We're, we're not just... And so it's like, don't tell us what we are, and you don't don't say we're Black American. Don't say that we that we're Hamitic. Don't say that that our roots go back to Africa. We'll tell you who who we are. How dare you tell us who we are? But then they get to go around telling everyone else Everybody in the world knows. who they are. Yeah. They literally, yeah. most people don't know this. They have a a breakdown of of a certain amount. Usually, it's seen to be eighteen nations, and they assign everyone on planet Earth to one of these nations. Besides the 12 tribe chart, they have this thing. I wrote an article on it for uh, for a Christian Research Institute. You can find it at equip.org. I wrote an article about the, about this very thing. And so they go around literally telling everyone who they are. So if they went to Oklahoma or Florida and it was Seminoles, they would say, you're from Reuben. But any other Native American, they'll say, well, you're from Gad. And unless right. the, unless unless they're a mestizo from Mesa, then, oh, you might be Issachar. But this is what these guys are doing, and they think this is okay. It's like, And then they're upset upset when people don't agree with them they're upset when people don't want to hear it they're upset by when people are they're coming into their spot and and Mm -hmm. doing this and they they just can't understand the problem they just can't understand and then they turn around and use racial slurs and and call the people they say they're trying to reach liars i mean think about what they're trying to ask you to do if you're native american and you see some guy in purple and gold understand he's telling you do you are actually not this. Instead, you're what I tell you from the specific Israelite tribe you, originating from the Levant. That's who you mm-hmm. are. And so that's what you need to adopt. We'll tell you now how to keep your own culture because we're the interpreters of how to do this law, which is essentially our <laughs> culture as Israelites. Right, and right. by the way, uh, you need to now dress in, in if you're a man, uh, black cargo pants, black boots, and purple shirts that you buy from our tailors. No, yeah. that, that's what they're. That's what they're going to come in and they're trying to do. You, you know, <laughs> that is by definition colonialism. That all of all of the stuff you just you just uh, described, vocab is uh, the same exact thing that that the the Europeans did. And they speak are, this language. Speak right, this other speak language. This language. Yep. Yeah. Lashadan Kwadash. Yeah. And uh, you need to wear these colors. Uh, you need to wear this uniform. Uh oh. Speaking uh, of uniform, uh, speaking of uniform, <laughs> everyone pick up the new Urban Theologian shirt that I got on. Yeah. If it, 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 I don't think this is yeah this isn't colonialism for you to to buy this because it's on your own free will <laughs> but go to vocabmalone.com pick this up and uh, if you want nice. you can sew fringes on the bottom of it but it's available nice. now and it's a way to support the ministry <laughs> as well as being on Patreon go ahead bro. I know yeah truth <laughs> truth defender says Lakers colors and I know that 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 I'm a Laker fan and that just it 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 hurts me that they took those colors but anyway. Um, but yeah, so, you know, all of that stuff that you just said, you know, you need to, here's the thing is, is the European said in order to be able to receive Christ, you need to look like this. You need to walk like this. You need to act like this and you need to throw everything about yourself that you know and understand away. 
And so what I have said before, and I've said it on multiple channels, is, is that IUIC and uh, the other, and I'm just going to say it, black Hebrew Israelites, and I know they don't like that, but yet they are going to call and use racial slurs towards my people. So I think it's free game. But yeah, not the, only that, but you know what they do mm -hmm. when we when we talk about these issues. You know what they say to us: "Stay out of black business." Right. Stay and I say, wait, 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 wait. I, I thought I you thought, didn't like being called black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, I just want everyone to notice this. It's like, okay, say whatever you want to, you know, with Hebrews lights. But I just want everyone to see the tactic. These guys are black when it's convenient. It, right. when, when it comes to these Hebrew Israelites, and they are the leader of the, the whole thing. That's why they got the term black Hebrew Israelites. I just usually say Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. Hebrew Islamism, but it's still accurate, and they used to call themselves that, and some of the groups still do use that. So here's the thing. Right. When it's convenient, it's stay out of black people's business. It's not stay out of black indigenous and native business. It's stay out of black right. business. Black people's business, yeah. But, 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 then, but then they'll say, well, no, no, it's actually the – so it shows you really uh, – like this kind of convenient use that they'll they'll use it sometimes. Uh, if you come up against them, oh, it's because you you dislike black people, you hate black people. Wait, I thought I thought this wasn't a black. I Wait, thought it wasn't I, black is your we like thing. Well, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's how they do. So here's some of the groups listed by the SPLC: the Jewish people are imposters and thieves, uh, white mm -hmm. people in the LGBT community are devils, and that queerness is a plague. Da 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 da, and. And check this out. And this is funny because I don't know if you guys know, but Nathaniel used to call himself a Gadite. He went through a Gad phase. Nathaniel mm. himself, in old videos, he was saying he was Gad. Almost every Hebrew Israelite that goes back a number of years has had a Gadite phase. It's like very. Mm. It's like trendy for them to ad adopt. It's like adopt this this cultural appropriation. Oh, I'm a Gadite. And you'll see them wear sort of native-ish looking clothes. In fact, they had a fashion you know, show. Okay. Okay, it's all good. They had a fashion show, IUIC did. And uh, some of these folks dressed up like that. Uh, Mr. Phil Fox, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Please subscribe to his channel, by the way. So here's what it says. In the video's comment, Blacksmith expressed concerns about Black Israelites coming back in numbers. On Thursday, Blacksmith's video had almost 70,000 views on TikTok. And we might even watch it here. Just give me a second. Um, and then I'm not going to be able to pronounce that name. But it says, a Navajo person posted on Twitter about the Black Israelites' visit to Pine Ridge. She tweeted that the group attended a children's Easter Sunday event and were flashing that they were armed. Uh, now, so the Hebrewsites didn't deny that they went to a children's event. All right. Because uh, I guess... So they, just, just so they know. All right. Because... Oh, because the gal had to do it, and so they were questioning her. So here, here you go. Well, hold it a little closer, but uh, tell everyone what this, that what that is. MHA, wait, MHA or MH? Yeah, right. MHA Nation. Yeah, yeah. I saw that's in a Rickra Nation. Yeah. So that that is my tribal card. And the reason you're doing that is because of the slur <laughs> they use, which we'll discuss later. So yeah. they, they really did a bum rush a kids event. And you could say, well, they yep. shouldn't be hunting for Easter eggs, whatever. But isn't that uh, – how is that not unsettling? Let me tell you something about IUIC. What was that guy's name, Chicken Who Can't Swim? What was, that, what was his name yeah, earlier? Chicken Can't Swim. IUIC's yeah. name <laughs> – <laughs> should be chicken who calls the cops because I showed up to their school in San Diego, just me, David Wood, and John McCray. We were on the sidewalk, public sidewalk, did not go up to their steps, none of that, and just filmed a video. And we didn't knock on their door, we didn't do anything that had anything to do with them. We did film a video in front of their school. They called mm -hmm. the cops on us, they called the cops yeah. on us. We did another one where in Dallas, Texas, I was in their parking lot and I filmed a video. Didn't engage. I didn't go up to anyone. They came out to me in the parking lot and followed me around like Velcro. That's how close these guys stuck to me. But I didn't do none of that. And then they put a video out about it later saying there's women and children there. I was not even by the school. I was at the very edge of the parking lot with the school in the background. But yet they'll go up straight up where the kids really are for real. As outsiders, right. causing fear and panic, th these folks, <laughs> this is how they do it. Now, look what it says. They were also handing out flyers that had anti-Native and racism rhetoric backed by pseudoscience. Um, she pseudoscience, tweeted. See, they even, even they can reckon. That, I mean, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. is That's crazy that even the untrained person who's not trained in, in uh, apologetics 
already knows that they're pseudo. And they are. And they are. And Absolutely. like I said, you know, uh, even, the, even the Mormons had to find that out. And that's why this Mormon lost his faith, because he lost his faith in this whole Hebraic Indian theory. That's what it's called sometimes in, 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 in uh, the academic circles that write about this. They sometimes call it Hebraic Indian theory, because it goes back to the 1800s, or actually probably farther a little bit. They're starting to get bold, but no one will listen to us natives. And so uh, I'm glad that people tweeted about this. Yeah. And talked about this, you know. I'm glad. And then, and then the the ladies are asking, you know, where's our men? They weren't they weren't for this. The uh, TikTok account run by a Black Kids Like group based in Portland posted photos of their visit to Rosebud. <laughs> Look what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We're doing the work. That show the group interacting with Lakota people and handing out flyers. Uh, so Portland went to Rosebud, the IUIC Portland, and then IUIC Denver um, went to uh, Pine Ridge. That's what it looks yeah. like. So this is like a yeah. mission trip for them to go annoy people. Mm-hmm. The TikTok shows that black Israelite materials, including flyers about the downfall of the Native Americans, the truth about Native Americans, claims that Christopher Columbus used the Bible to find America, and the true description of Christ. IUIC Portland reached out to the so-called Native American in Warm Springs, Oregon Reservation to bring them to repentance and their true heritage. Let us tell you. True. Chantal Lugley, Jersey Girl 1981, a native TikToker who lives on Rosebud, posted IUIC Portland's video with the overlay text, Stay Off Our Reservations. We do not Mm -hmm. want you here, Lugley wrote, or your false narratives and genocide. So what's your thought, bro? Yeah, so, I mean, since since they're, you know, I have family that's on, on, actually, I have, um, uh, I have two of my first cousins uh, are there have lineage from the Rosebud Reservation, and then also I have family that's on Pine Ridge as well, and oh. um, and so I actually put out uh, a PSA to my tribe, and, and I tagged my um, on Facebook, and I I try I as many of the as the, the tribal council members uh, back home on the MHA Nation. That I could, I tagged them into this post and let them know that you know these guys are out doing this. So it 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 hit pretty close to home for for me. And so, uh, and I mean, I I told you about this kind of stuff that was going on. I think a little over a year ago. I think vocab, you know, that they were trying to make a push to try to hit the reservations because they were doing it down south uh, mm-hmm. first. So they they tried it out down south, but now they're making their way to my uh, homeland and. Uh, and so, so yeah, so I, you know, it, this stuff is, you know, I'm something I'm, I'm not taking lightly. And, uh, you know, it, it sort of regained my focus to, to make sure that, you know, I'm going to go through and, and, you know, we've, I've done some stuff here and there, you know, with like uh, our, our brother, uh, BK Apologist. Uh, mm-hmm. He did the, the whole IUIC virtual blitz and those types of things, uh, you know, this past uh, summer, almost a year ago now. And then uh, also, you know, the couple conversations that we had. Um, so, so yeah, I'm just, you know, gonna. I need to refocus and reengage. And then also, there's, you know, there's there's this kind of movement. It's it's not. It's kind of parallel with this, but it's it's the whole, uh, you know, the 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 African Americans or Black people are actually the uh, the real Native Americans, and that you know, essentially, the the natives aren't um, aren't aren't actually native it's kind of the whole you know fake jew type thing with that the uh the hebrew israelites are doing uh with the jewish people the there's a there's a group and it's growing it sounds like because uh, there's you know what's his name i can't remember his name dane dane calloway or whatever uh-huh. uh he's got i think he's got like seven hundred thousand followers or something like that it's something wild so a lot of yeah. people are listening to his his junk but yeah. it's not necessarily Hebrew Israelite, but it's it's in that same vein. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Amy O'Donnell rule says, wait, I need a magnifying glass. Where are these weapons? I did not see any in the pic. So uh, one of the, the native TikTokers actually made a video about this and said, maybe you guys don't understand what flashing is. Flashing is <laughs> right. where you show it and then you don't have it anymore. Now, I right. wasn't there. That's really not the main e- – well, I mean, if – I mean. 
obviously, it seems like that's a concern. You know what I mean? And the like, uh, it is a concern. But uh, you know, the issue is, uh, I think, also just what are they actually saying? What are they actually saying? Right? Elijah Garcia says we. Always are on alert if the HBI, I know he means BHI, try and visit our reservation. What's your res, brother? Uh, thankfully, they have not, but willing and ready to stand for the gospel and keep our native people from false doctrine, such as BHI. So, yeah, I mean, they... Um, they definitely, they definitely, you know, are are doing this now because really, you know, mm-hmm. they got to fill one hundred forty four thousand, and they don't have a lot of gadites. Right. You know, there's not that many gadites, and and there are people that think that you know that's what they are. So let's see if we could watch this video. I'm gonna try to see if this sound will go. I don't know if it will, but let's see, see what it does if it will. Uh, let's see. Do I got, does it have volume? Or oh, that's just a picture, isn't it? I actually, yeah. had e- I actually had emailed, uh, messaged her the poster of this, and she said that she would want to come on, but she she had to work. So shout out to mm-hmm. shout out to her. Let's let's check out this then. Let's see this one. Let me see. Okay, this one uh, looks like it does have some sound. Hopefully, it'll play through. Let's see if it does. I want to play this, though. You'll be able to see it either either way. This is from one of the native TikTokers. So, <laughs> notice, you know, the hook is always call our school and join up. Do you see what there, mm-hmm. the proof that Gad kept the commandments? Hey, by the way, IOIC, if, if, uh, if Gad kept the commandments, then why did they lose their identity? Right. I thought the whole shtick is you don't keep the commandments, so you lost your identity. They're using the pseudo-archaeology here. The Lost Lunas Decalogue Stone oh, yeah. in New Mexico, which is a uh, really late origin. And when you right. look at it, um, it appears to be a fresh inscription. Uh, every evidence, it does not show age or weathering for something age appropriate. And I actually and had – uh, go ahead. It has like a – it has vegetables in it too, right? Wasn't there a carrot in there somewhere? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but I know that <laughs> – Like it, up carrot? Yeah, it's outside of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's where it's close to. But um, you know, this this was there's a lot of problems with the low. Saloon. I actually done a show on this where I use some Heiser's material. I encourage mm-hmm. people to check that out. So this is pseudo archaeology, basically, at this point as well. And then they've got the Back Creek Stone problematic and they also have the one in ohio so uh the the thing would be like say with the lost lunas you have to tell us who wrote it you can't just say look here here is a stone with some hebrew on it therefore native americans israelites who wrote the stone what what group of israel what group of native americans wrote and also didn't they forget their language so it's it right. doesn't make sense you can't just have this random stone where's the other evidence the other evidence that they were keeping traditions or Hebrew, because what it is is the Ten Commandments. Where's the other evidence? And who wrote it in particular? You need a settlement close by. They're, they don't even stipulate who made it. They just say, oh, there's a stone here. It must have always been here, but even though no one found it until uh, like 1933 or whatever. It must have right. always been here. Therefore, it proves Native Americans are Israelites. It does no such thing. And there's a lot of problems with the Hebrew on it. But I actually had a Hebrew Israelite say, well, it's true the inscription looks fresh and not weathered, but that's because the Most High preserved it. Because if you've ever been there, there's shade over it, and so it doesn't have the same amount of erosion. <laughs> it really said that was really the wow. the answer that he gave. But here, let's watch the rest of this video. There's the still wearing fringes. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Wow. The downfall of the Native Americans. I wish we could see mm-hmm. this a little bit better. I know, me too. Cannot, cannot really see. I see something about Spanish, but uh, I'm trying to see. Okay, so there, there's some of that. Now, Phil Fox, are you ready to watch some of the IUIC reaction to all this? Oh, man. Yeah, I've, 
I went through some of the brain damage already, but let's do it again. Can you tell me what's the title of this video we're about to play, Phil Fox? The five dollar Indians. And so, if you're not familiar with what the five, the five dollar Indians are, it's a reference to uh, to essentially what were were white people that were getting on what were called the Dawes rolls back in the uh, late 1800s. Uh, and the the Dawes rolls were the uh, the documents that that proved your tribal affiliation. Because uh, what what the the Dawes rolls were is they were from the Dawes Act or the 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 the, the allotment act. So up until this time, land was only given to the tribes in particular. There was no particular individual ownership. But until the Dawes Act in the late 1800s. Then it was, uh, then it miraculously was by the United States government standards okay for individual tribal membership to own tri uh, own pieces of land. So it was illegal, actually illegal for individual natives to own land until the Dawes Act. <clears throat> so I what think there's a, are doing there's a I watched a movie it was within the past like ten years that had a some of this in there i'm trying to remember what the movie was but go ahead brother shout out to yeah. uh d new for dropping that link i pinned it in the chat and also shout out to nice. white label consulting who's responsible for the shirt nice. that's my man mike mike you got the other shirts i paid that invoice come through the yeah. house if you can bro come through if you can uh, mike uh you come through the studio if you can all right uh i'm about to play this video but go ahead you talk about the five dollar which is a total racial slur to, it imagine is, yeah, so they're actually calling real native americans five dollars like fake Indians. What? Yeah, they're calling them fake Indians. And what's so crazy is they're the ones trying to get Native Americans to drop their actual real culture for something else that kind of like would, in a way, it's turning them into what they're calling them. How are you a fake Native American if you're standing by your culture? It does not make mm -hmm. sense. How how are they fake because of that? It d does right. not make sense. It does not make sense. Okay, let's let's watch some of these videos. This is a bunch of offensive stuff, but what do you expect? We're dealing language with IUIC. Warning. Yeah, language warning, language all that warning. kind of stuff. Yeah, but sensitivity. <laughs> okay, now let me turn this volume up. So here's the deal. Uh, Mr. Phil Fox and I, after discussing IUIC, which is a extremist, One West, radical Hebrew Israelite group, after discussing how they went into Pine Ridge Reservation and uh, an, uh, another got one, two, two, two that we know got rejected, very salty about it. So they're doing a show where they use a racial slur for the title. This is all w pretty recent. This is all within the mm -hmm. month of April 2023. So this is new stuff we're talking about. Did this show, and they're talking about uh, a guy who ended up being a child molester. It's actually a very terrible story. And they're blaming... The people on the reservation, it's the strangest thing. And I just want to point out right in the beginning, and Mr. Fox is going to explain stuff later a little bit, shows their ignorance, to be frank with you. Um, right in the beginning, when they talk about this guy, this doctor who's a child molester, which is a tragic story, the guy says, sounds like Amalek. So there's their anti-Semitism, because if you understand Hebrew Israelite talk, when they say Amalek, it's their way to say, sounds like an Ashkenazi Jew. That's what he's saying. So th this, this is their anti-Semitism. Imagine the reading about somebody, and be, just because they're a, a pedophile, saying, oh, sounds like this, they must be part of this racial group. That's what's happening here. So listen closely here as we play this clip. Of, it's about a minute long. Let's play this. Telling the doctor after learning a child patient had stayed the night at his house. Randy Rottenfeller sound like a uh, 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 sound like Emily. Go ahead. But the Indian Health Service. But the Indian Health Service didn't fire Mr. Weber. They didn't fire him. Instead, it transferred him to another hospital. Watch this in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. In the same reservation that told us we weren't allowed there. The one that lied on us. Right, the one that the one that's been lying on us. Yeah. The same Absolutely. reservation that said we had guns, we had weapons, we fight children. We they never said you fight children. I never heard that. These dudes no. are just liars. They exaggerate. What they're saying is you showed up to a, a children's event all aggressive and hostile. Uh, they're saying it was, mm -hmm. you know, that's what they're not feeling. They I didn't need to fight children. They didn't say that. I didn't need to fight children. I mean, I mean, a, a, we, we brought drugs. 
When, who said that? We brought drugs. These guys are liars. You see what I'm saying? That, that's why you can't trust them. So, you know, I know th this is basically two groups of non-Christians because from what I saw, the native folks who responded, they were not Christians. The ones I, the ones no. I saw by things that they said, it did not, it didn't seem like anybody was a Christian. So, and of course, IUIC is not Christians. So these are two groups yeah. of non-Christians. But I mean, you know, I'm on the side of, of the victim here. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm right. on the side of, of and, and I want the true gospel to go for it, not this gospel of division and hate. And and listen to yeah. them talking and lying about these folks. They never said you fought children and brought drugs. This is what I'm saying. IUIC, they're not honorable men. They're liars. They're a little more professional than groups like the Watchmen for Israel and some of these other groups who just kind of lay it all out there. But they believe the same things. They just hide it better with slicker production. Mm -hmm. But they're liars, not to be trusted, and they're going to be exposed as they grow more and more. You're going to start to see more of their ugliness come out. So I just want to say that in as we play this. They allowed this demon to stay there Damn. because his face looked at like Jesus Christ. I want mm -hmm. everyone to understand the stupidity of what he just said. They literally said, oh, so they let a child molester doctor stay there because he looked like Jesus. What? They're saying that the native has been brainwashed, and so this person looks... Does this even look like a white Jesus to you, first of all? This doesn't look like a white Jesus anyway. I'm just saying, the whole thing's dumb. But real quick, I know we got to keep it moving. Can you explain, Mr. Phil Fox, how these guys do not understand how the system works? They're talking on stuff they don't know, and they're blaming the victim. Yeah, yeah. so so they said that they that the Pine Ridge just allowed this, this sexual predator to come to their reservation. I'm sure that Pine Ridge was blindsided by this because you don't pick your doctors because the the the, the reservations most reservations are are under IHS Indian Health Service and you get the doctors that you're given and so this was really the bad of IHS mm -hmm. uh, and that this is a government ran program and so to blame. To blame them and and how would they know because there's there's literally no resources for uh the the citizens of the pine ridge reservation to get any background information on this doctor so it's not like a lot of this is public information or where would they even go because it's not like this doctor has a private practice for him to go to uh or for them to be able to vet uh or if there's any kind of you know legal action and so it, it this is this is the bad of the government you know this is the government's bad but yet they're blaming uh pine ridge as if they were harboring this person or providing some kind of cover for him after he did all these atrocities on on the other reservation in montana so i mean that's that's the thing is is that they don't understand how this system works um, and so they're they're blaming Prime Prime Ridge for this for harboring this man when it's they had no clue whatsoever. Yeah, this is a classic case of blaming the victim. And these guys are so perverse. Somehow they're tying in this tragedy to themselves. Right. This has nothing to do with you, IUIC. Nothing. Right. My right. goodness, these yeah. guys. The ones who were lying on us, you know, and all this. But look what they let happen. So uh, they let happen. You know that that's basically what you're saying. Is that Pine Ridge let this happen? You know what I mean, and and that's the thing is, you know, and and also there's there's that assumption, right, that these people are either stupid, dumb, or blind to the to the now things that happen. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, and here they're saying it's because that this guy looked like Shastabolashia, the white Jesus <laughs> figure. That's what they're saying. Listen, oh man, we don't believe in Christianity, but you sure look like Jesus. That's right. And believe it or not, you so-called... Like, that's really what they were saying. Well, this guy looks like Jesus, even though we're not Christians. This guy looks like Jesus, so we're going to let him stay, molest our children. Like, what? The, the kind of stupid, narcissistic argument. No wonder these folks are upset. And this is how you do outreach? Imagine if Christian missionaries were like, hey, let's go reach out to the reservation, and they didn't get accepted, and they made a video bad mouthing mm -hmm. them and talking trash about them using racial slurs right oh, yeah. reservation. believe it or not you have been indoctrinated you have been indoctrinated because if you were so strong in your beliefs you wouldn't allow this white man to come into your reservation and rape your children right wow mm -hmm. wow 
If you were so strong in your beliefs, you wouldn't allow this white man. Yes, like three times. Three times, big signs. Big ass signs. Big signs. <laughs> yeah, real, 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 real funny topics there, guys. You know, these guys is just... And that, that's, a, I mean, I, I like to play on words there, but, <clears throat> but I mean, these guys claim to understand and know ancient culture. If I was to go out, or that's why I, when I come on to shows like, like yours, Vocab, or I'd say anything on the internet, or I, I come out and say anything, what I am doing is I, I understand and know that I am representing my people. I'm representing my family. I'm representing my community. And so to, to, to do anything that would dishonor my people as a whole. And these guys do not understand these concepts, which tells me that they have absolutely no, no understanding of ancient culture whatsoever. But yet they're the ones who are claiming that they know ancient culture, that they know the ways that people are supposed to conduct themselves. Yeah. But, but yet they, they go and do these types of things all the time. All the time. In trouble. And you know what's crazy? This is, what, this is why they don't want us on the reservation, soldier. You know why? Because they know we going to unveil all the sin that's going on in the reservation. So they didn't want us on the reservation because we'll expose child molesters. Um, IUIC, abilities. maybe you should like detect the murderers in your own congregation. Like the guy who killed Joy Morgan. Mm. And, and, and other IUIC affiliated criminals... It's a longer list than actually people have been made aware of. But the one who murdered Joy Morgan was the worst because that was all through IUIC. He was still in good standing. He wasn't a former member. They met at IUIC events. That's where she got in. Maybe you should worry about that. You know, like that. Like, your audio is breaking up, vocab. We're going to stay. There you go. We're going to shine the light to the darkness that's going on on these reservations. That's right. You get love in here, soldier. <laughs> that's why they don't want us there. So they don't want us there because they're going to shine a light. And mm. what's the implication? Native Americans want to keep child molesters on the reservation? What in the world? Right. They said, we got so much sin going on. We don't need y'all niggas coming in and messing up nothing. That's Leave. Right. Get out right now. You got that Bible, them flyers, whatever you got to say, don't want to hear it. Get out. Man, because they let nigga. Because they let Esau rape boys for 21 years, and nobody went to the reservation to figure that out. So uh, did IUIC, are they the ones who figured it out then? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, did IUIC, was there an inspector gadget, mm -hmm. IUIC edition, who came in and was like, Hey, perfect. That was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect, actually. Let me see if I can do that. I'll get you, Gadget. Yours was better, though. That was good, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't fi They didn't figure it out. What are they talking about? These dudes are some weirdo. Kick them out. Nobody kicked them out. I guarantee you, it'll be a thousand, two thousand brothers on these reservations to kick all these pedophiles out. A thousand Hebrew Israelites. Imagine the two thousand IUIC members watching around, and like the, the, what the, 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 their job is to, to eliminate peta. Like this is just crazy, mm. man. Yeah, it's... like that. That's what they're gonna do. We we need you, Nathaniel. Save us, Nathaniel. Save us. Save us. We know that no one on the planet Earth has been able to break down the Bible like you have, and you're chosen right. to lead Israel. By the way, what I just said is something that his higher-ups literally said about him at the last Passover. If you don't believe me, watch my most recent short. It's only 15 seconds. You can watch the full wow. thing. It's called The Entrance of Bishop Nathaniel. It's on their stuff. But watch it. He literally says no one on the planet Earth has been able to open up this Bible like Bishop Nathaniel, and that's why I admire wow. him. So we save as you. Come on out! They got to go. That's right. We need justice for our Native American brothers and sisters. Bring it out. We need. I don't know if you guys heard in the background where it says "That's right" and different little. They have now using sound clips of Nathaniel in their broadcasts, like they got a button, mm. and they hit different buttons for stuff that Nathaniel says. 
It's like he he's their soundbite now. Right. Along idolatry. with Kanye. Yeah. I smell right. idolatry. Serious idolatry. All right, let's play the oral shepherding people's souls, right? Uh, as they do this broadcast. I am being sarcastic. Tours. You got tours attractions on the reservation. It's a private, it's a private reservation. So now it's private when, when black brothers go on the reservation. Now it's private. So, so, bring up so, the sin. so what they're trying to do is just uh, they're accusing. Again, notice how now it's black. I thought I thought mm -hmm. Hebrews lights weren't just black. It's right. not about whoever the ethnicity of the group is. It's the lies and stuff. And notice I did leave a comment. I wonder if it's still here. Let me read it. They don't want you there because you bring lies and want to strip them of their true culture and replace it with purple threads you'll require them to buy from your IUIC clothes shop. <laughs> That's exactly what they want to do. They want to IUIC colonize them. That you scared to bring out because you want the sin to continue because you $5 Indians are benefiting from the sin that's going on on these reservations. The man just said, you fake Native Americans are benefiting from white doctors raping your children. That's what he just said, and that's why you don't want us there. Isn't that what he just said? I don't know how you can... Mm -hmm. Guys, when you watch this, doesn't it make you upset? Doesn't this make you angry? If you no. have any sense of justice... You should be very upset when you watch this. Captain, when the white man comes over there, they make him feel like a king. Yeah. Yeah, they driving around. They make sure nobody hurt him. They take him to the worst places on the reservation so that he can show the world how jacked up y'all really are. How? No solutions at all. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a. We've got the solution, though. Follow Nathaniel. Yeah, so I mean, and again, that's the assumption, right? It's always the assumption is that, you know, they're going to showcase and cater to the white man and all this kind of stuff. And and listen, like, you know, I, fam, I grew up on the reservation. I now live in in the Detroit area. Um, I don't know what's going on with the audio, but I do want to say, Phil Fox, um, I'm glad in a way that you're able to be on the reservation first because it prepared, prepared you for how bad Detroit was. So when you got to Detroit, <laughs> you were ready because you're like, yeah. I've, you know. Just, this is. <laughs> Just kidding, man. I, you know, I got to bang on Michigan a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know I know the vocab Michigan con connection, but. Uh... <laughs> but now but go yeah, ahead. So, I mean, no, so, yeah, it just. um. You know, so so these guys, they're just making these assumptions that that we we cater to white people because, uh, you know, because because they had a bad experience. And it I understand, and 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 most most tribes and most reservations, like people are friendly and they're welcoming, but the moment that you start to try to establish some kind of sense of dominance or domination that's when you normally you get the boot and so that that's just the way that's just the way the call i mean it, it's like that what it is every now and then it stops spoke to the police see i was said nobody wants to hear our side of the story that we're actually there right nobody now. wants to hear that they just go about his five dollars she ain't she went nowhere to be found she up in paradise while we in slavery on the reservation i spoke to the police when i was there the brother came up to me in the car. He said, hey, man, what, what y'all doing? I just want to see, you know, what y'all got going on. I said, yeah, you know, we, we just passing out flyers, you know, trying to teach our people to stop gang banging, to stop murdering, to stop killing each other, to, to how to get off of alcohol, to stop doing drugs. I told him we here to bring solutions. We here to help. He said, man, he said, thank you. This the police. Hold on, now this the police. Nobody want to hear this. This the police. You was with me, right? Yes, I was right next to you. He said, thank you. Watch this, watch this. He said, he said, my, he said, uh, uh, what did he say? He said, y'all busy? No, what did he say? Are y'all busy? And I was like, nah, nah, we're not busy. Oh, I asked him. I said, how busy do you get on the reservation? He said, it's just like the city. He said, actually, we just had a homicide two days ago. I said, man, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. So we ended up departing. He said, hey, man, if anybody out here messes with you, call us. We'll come out and take care of them. That's what he said. And uh, that is how IUIC operates, man, with the cops. I've had mm -hmm. IUIC call the cops on me uh, once downtown Phoenix at Roosevelt and First. And that's when one of the guys uh, didn't lay hands on me but laid boots on me, stood on top of my shoe so I couldn't move and immobilized me until his, his uh, leader told him to get off. 
And so, uh, you know, a little bit, a little something, something. And they called the cops that time. Because there's that. And then, and, 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 and then another time in San Diego, like I mentioned. And uh, I don't know if they did in Dallas before I left, but they made the video implying that, that they were concerned and worried about what I would do to their women and children. And That's this crazy. is how they operate. IUSC even called. There's a video. You can watch it online where they call the cops on ISUPK. <laughs> they actually called the cops on ISUBK once. And so this is how these guys operate, you know, just to so know. I was just going to bring up the point. So you're saying the difference in what this man did was ask you what we're doing what and listen. What you do and listen. And he right said, man. Yeah. He said, thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah. The brother said, if any. So that's uh, what's going on there, Phil Fox. So <laughs> there's more videos, but I think I think what I might do is I might even want to show the cover image to this. But what's your reaction to watching watching this stuff, man? Yeah. So I mean, you know, and and some of the stuff that they were saying like is actually factual. You know what I mean? There there has been historical oppression. There has there has the you know the the reservation is a food desert. There is a lot of, you know, there, there are just a lot of things that are, that are wrong with the reservation as far as opportunities and those types of things. And, and nobody would dispute that. But again, like the, the, the reservation isn't the Wild West. And I'm sorry that you, that our tribal sovereignty messes up your propaganda expedition. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You know, you come in and want to flex around and, and disturb uh, things that go on. And these communities, of course, they're going to they're going to come back at you and and and, uh, you know, start to uh, push you off and, and not allow you to, you know, to to propagate your propaganda. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and here it is, you know, the, the $5 Indians on Pine Red, Pine Ridge Reservation because, um, and essentially they're calling them fake. You know, they, they, and they're it's saying like, what, they're, they're what, fake Indians. And it's like, what's your, what's your justification, IUIC, for saying something like that? You know, I yeah. don't, we, I don't think we don't, you shouldn't be using that kind of racial slur anyway, but what's yeah. your, what's your justification? Exactly. And then look. This is like actually a common slur. Five dollar tries to deceive the prophets. So if you disagree with them, that's what they put on you. Yeah. Look at this. Wisdom crieth out, making change out of five dollar Indian. Like what the heck? <laughs> you got you guys seen this? You guys see this? The natives hour, five dollar Indians. Mm-hmm. Rerun five dollars on Pine Ridge, mm -hmm. Pine Ridge, and there you can mm -hmm. see you can see a little bit of the clip. So they're out there, you know, yeah. trying to talk to people, pushing their their false narrative. I mean, yeah. I mean, isn't that really uh, one of the reasons you first uh, we first kind of connected is because they were making yeah. some incursion incursions to the reservation? Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, a friend of mine was sort of like looking into it because he had heard it. I don't know where he heard it, but uh, so he was looking into it. And then so I started looking at this stuff. And then uh, I found another apologist that was in your in your past. I, I won't name them, uh, but um, they were part of a an old squad that you were part of. And then um, and then I found your stuff. And then, so uh, I seen your stuff was pretty good. It was clean. It was, you know what I mean? And, and uh, anyway, so that, yeah, the, that rest was history. But, and then I start to notice that there was, um, there, there was, it was gaining some traction huh. uh, as far as, you know, some folks it's, but again, like what, what alarms me with all of this is that this is actually, they're trying to make an, a, uh, concerted effort to go to the reservation uh -huh. and as before a bulk of the the stuff that i was seeing was them uh looking at and and um having conversations with with urbanized indians or natives right um and so that's that's my biggest 
reason for alarm with with all of this now is that I need to make sure that people that are within my uh, within my atmosphere know about these these folks, and I have enough pool, especially on my reservation. But I know people from I know a lot of people on Standing Rock Reservation, uh, which is in North Dakota, which is another Sioux tribe. I know. I know folks from the Crow Creek Reservation. I actually have uh, one of my adopted sisters is on the tribal council in the Crow Creek Sioux Reservation in South Dakota. Uh, so, you know, I probably have to put her on alert. And, you know, so I have, you know, I have connections throughout Indian country um, and have good friends that are all over Indian country, but they need to know about this stuff because uh, this, I mean, first of all, I mean, I literally do not trust these people uh, to be coming onto the reservation. And also I do not trust them uh, because of the literal sa- li- the literal safety of, of, of my people. Uh, if one person, you know, would happen to get into some kind of scuffle uh, because what they don't realize is that they're these, some of these reservations are extremely hostile environments. These are very, uh, you know, oppressed areas uh, and depressed areas. And there's there's some folks that would be willing to, if they felt disrespected, they would they would meet them with, you know, a level of, you know, of violence that they would, you know, that they would be used to if, you know, if they're in the inner cities and stuff like that. So they think just because they're, they're in, on the prairie in this small community, but I've always said that reservations are literally a ghetto on the prairie, um, and it's it's the it's similar mindset. It's, it's similar, um, you know, lack of opportunities and those types of things, but just in the middle of the prairies. Um, and so there's a lot of that same you know culture and hostility and those types of things, and even racism and 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 types of things as far as you know native people. And 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 I'm not even gonna lie about it. You know, there's Native people don't have a very solid view or like and want of white people. So a lot of their arguments that you hear these guys making, especially on on the stuff that we just seen, doesn't make sense. Because Native people, all the oppression that has happened in reservation systems and the, the, like even the Dawes Act, for example, these are all acts of, of the United States government oppressing my Native people. And all of these things are not lost on my native people. So there's not a lot of native people that have a really fond outlook of, of white people. Like, listen, my, my grandmother who raised me w- was a boarding school survivor. Mm. So in essence, I'm, I'm only second generation. I'm not third generation. I'm only, I'm only one generation removed because my, my grandmother raised me, not my mother. And, uh, and my mother is now, you know, she's now in my life and stuff, but as a, as a child, she was in and out and I was mostly raised and influenced heavily by my grandmother and my grandmother had a disdain for white people and almost a, almost a hatred that you could say. But the thing was, is that she, she would tell me like, we don't hate these people. You can't trust them. You don't hate them, but we need to have pity on them because they don't understand what they do. They don't understand us. That's why they hate it. That's why they hate us because they're afraid of us. They don't understand us. And so all of these things don't make sense as to, you know, oh, they had a white Jesus and they had, you know, they, they, they worship this white man and they're indoctrinated by this white man and all this kind of stuff. Like, doesn't, this doesn't make sense. Right. You obviously don't know what you're talking about. IUIC. Not at all. Well, I mean, I think that's uh normal situation for them so you know i just went through while he was talking if you saw on the screen i put iuic gad it was almost all just videos of iuic saying they had done something with gad you know something with native american because that's like Mm -hmm. a, a thing for them you know they have a lack of that thank god as of now but they're not giving up they're trying to go into the reservation that's what they want to try to do and uh so you know people should be aware of this because you know i've um, been putting out stuff recently talking about how urban apologists to be watchmen and yes watch women and this is something mm-hmm. that we need to make people aware of uh, IUIC and groups like that they're not happy 
just pestering and converting people in one place. They got to go to some others. And, um, you know, just like the Pharisees of old, Jesus said in Matthew, you travel over land and sea, you know, to make people twice the son of hell as you, you know. And that's what's going on, and that's what they're going to continue to do. So, and, and and they will use some of these old, tired-out arguments that Mormons used that mm-hmm. old-school Europeans sometimes use. Not all, but, you know, you can read about this. Let me show people a couple books because this is a thing, and uh, I did drop it in the chat, my article on this about Native American Israelites. I did drop it in the, in the live chat there, and I, um, and I put it in the top. I pinned it. But let me show you some resources on this here. Let's see. I got... Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, here's... Here's two I'm going to recommend that are helpful. Uh, these are not like Christian books. That's not the point. These are books by scholars. Old mm-hmm. Canaan and a New World, Native Americans and the Lost Tribes of Israel, Elizabeth Fenton, New York University Press. Great book on this topic. A great book on this topic. So much information in a short book. It's relatively new. I forget exactly when this came out. Let me see. 2020. Yeah. And this is a great, great book. And here's another one. It only has a few chapters that I would say are completely relevant to this, but they're very good. The ones that are specifically northernmost Israel, I believe, and the Ten Lost Tribes. And especially, this is probably the main one, The Rise and Fall of the Jewish Indian Theory. And mm. this is a great book, too, Hebrew and the Bible in America, the first two centuries. So we can know about this, and we can know the truth. Um, and you see, there's almost hardly anything to debunk when it comes to their proving that it, it, you know Native Americans are gad, because you saw how silly it is. And Phil Fox just like can look at it briefly and say, well, here's a problem with that. They're gonna, you guys are going to have to do better with your stuff. At least make us look up something. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because these these yeah. arguments are just paltry. 1993, this one dropped. So I've given wow. a couple of resources for this topic because it does relate to this, and that is why there's a whole channel. This guy in Arizona, and what's he do? He mixes Native American stuff with Hebrew Israelism and says that Joseph Smith actually was a black Israelite. And he's mm. a super popular guy. I think he goes by Big Judah. Big Judah is his name. And, uh, you know, you go on his live stream, you got 800 people. And he's hooping and hollering wow. and talking about Joseph Smith has been whitewashed. And the, the original guy, here's his real picture. It's a black Israelite. So this is like a thing that has happened with these guys. It's always been there. Uh, but this is real stuff, man. I just want to let people know. And, you know, there's a lot to cover here because I had my, my man Conscious Chicano on once. And we discussed sort of the native oh, yeah. side. Uh, when you go farther south, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a, yeah, lot of, yeah. a lot of ground to cover, pun intended, with this. Right. But they're, they right. don't really make full-orbed arguments. Um, no. And it's pretty easy to destroy the arguments that they do make. But it's really about an emotional appeal if anyone signs up. I'm praying a lot of people don't sign up, but ultimately I want to see uh, the, the family of God increase where a true gospel— you know, not not a colonized gospel or anything like that is presented, believed, and accepted, and people understand who Jesus Christ really is. You know, that's not some European trying to force people to do X, Y, Z, but someone that you can put your hope and trust in, and he's the only savior for the problems right. of this world. And that's the solution. Now, UIC is not presenting that solution. So, nope. Phil Fox, uh, some final words here. Yeah, man. Uh, so, I mean, if you got questions, ask an Indian. <laughs> don't ask IUIC. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Seriously. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, because that you know that that's the that's the modern that's always been the modern narrative is is you know we you need to we need to tell you about who you are, uh-huh. and you know we know who we are. You know we we have our own stories. We have our own. Uh, I know my own creation story. For goodness sake, uh, actually, my clan represents. One of our origin stories, um, you know, we have, uh, we have, we actually have our language, you know, we didn't have to make it up, um, you know, think, yeah, and yes, has there been oppression? Have you know, things have been dying, and and things aren't, uh, you know, things aren't as as relevant today as they they once been. But the thing is, is I'm teaching my children, and Lord willing, one day I'll be able to teach my grandchildren. And, um, and, you know, so this, these are things that are just aren't going to go away, but we understand and know who we are as native people. 
and we have our, our sense of identity, even though it was almost stripped away. Mm-hmm. But you, African Americans, let me ask you, IUIC, what tribe did you come from from Africa? Do you know that? You you can't tell me, because you that's why you have to try to use these, these extremely loose connections with with the bible and and twist the bible extremely out of context in order to to try to fit some false narrative a fake narrative and now that you're coming to the reservations that was the wrong move because now guess what i'm going to ring the alarm and now i have to refocus and 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 start to come so i'm going to be uh, my new name is called uh, Phil Ca- Phil Cab Falone, and uh, I'll be start I'll be starting a new channel. <laughs> yeah, is that right? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I mean that that's the thing. So you know, I'm I'm gonna be real, uh, you know, re uh, refocusing because I mean your your arguments, Hebrew Israelites, your arguments are not hard to debunk. Uh, especially, especially because you guys don't have a clue what you're talking about. Not a clue. And I'll continue to just keep, keep doing, you know, even, even if I got to just keep doing little shows with vocab and little shows on my channel. And, and also, you know, check out, uh, BK apologist, uh, IUIC mm-hmm. blitz That's right. too. That's right. I mean, he did, he did a whole day's worth of blitz on, on IUIC. So, um, so I mean, it's it's not hard. I mean, you're you're, and especially because you can you guys cannot, you guys don't have a clue as to what native culture is, what it looks like, because you know, vocab and I even did it on my channel where we we went through the the your your explanation of Gad, and we just did a brief uh, a, a brief overview of it at the start of this show, but. Um, but we're gonna we're come. I'm I'm I'll def, I'm definitely coming at you the the moment I hear Gad and and listen, I I was even on several of the live streams with uh with the Hollywood Israelites, um I think those guys are uh, ISUPK, and uh, I I done made you know I scrambled their eggs on on their channel because the the dude could not answer any of the questions. He, he was reading his script and I would ask him questions and he could not do it. And he, I was messing up his readings and all, cause that's all he did was just read and then propaganda, 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 propaganda. But Mm-mm. y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all don't want to hear from a, from a real native, from a, from someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Y'all want to go and talk to the folks who don't really care or understand what their culture is and all this kind of stuff. It might not have be educated with their culture, but I'm educated in what my culture is. I grew up in it and I've been exposed to it. I have family who are medicine people who are non-Christian. So people who understand my culture, who understand our belief ways, who understand our cultural ways and our life ways. But yet you're going to come and tell me and tell us who we are. You got another thing coming. If you think that's that's just how we're going to roll, that's not going to happen. Amen. Especially not on my watch. Amen. And uh, let me show everyone, actually. Let me see if I can. The pro, That's the program we did together, right? Yeah. That's the program. When was that? What, two years ago. Two years ago. Two already. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. I put this up on my channel yet? Do you remember? I the... think you, you were going to. I don't remember if you did or not. I need to look. But but everyone, while we're here, please subscribe. Mr. Phil Fox. Um just look up Mr. Phil Fox on, on YouTube. Subscribe. Yep. He does a beautiful thing called Drops of Hope Ministries. And, yeah, we brought up uh, the IUIC website. That's what that's what you can see in that stream right there right now. If I put mm-hmm. it on my channel, maybe someone could find that. I don't even know. But, yeah, so we got this. ba ba boom ba boom ba boom And uh, it was pretty dope. So it was definitely subscribe to that, brother. And shout-out to Michelle Turner, Wawo, D knew, I think I already said you, Nate, but if I didn't, much love, you know, to you as well. And uh, who else? There's someone else I missed. Uh, I don't remember, but a couple other people. And, uh, yeah, dope. Uh, ah, shot. Let's see. Well, we had a Hebrews light. You act like it's a bad thing to be the children of the Yahweh. 
<laughs> uh, no, it's 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 not that. Um, what it is is number one is your whole understanding of what it means to be a child of God is wrong. You mm-hmm. don't use a John 1 definition, and that's not the only place, but I love John 1 because it's so clear. And it says, but to those who did believe, to those who did receive, mm-hmm. he gave them the right or the power to become sons of God, children of God, to all who believed in his name. It tells you right there. And it, what it, it's telling you right there how Christ came to his own. They didn't receive him. This is all in John 1, my friend. By the way, it also shows you Jesus is God, which you deny. Amen. You want to be uh, a God, son of God, but Jesus doesn't really get to be, unless he's just the generic way that all Israelite men are, supposedly. And what to say? Hey, you know, most of his own people reject him. But if you did believe, if you do believe, and it still applies to today, gave the right to become the children of God. And so the, the problem is uh, Asherah El is you have the wrong understanding, wrong definition of what it means to be child of God in the first place. You think it's based upon a seed line. When the seed mm-hmm. is ultimately about Jesus, haven't you read Galatians 3? This is the whole Bible just dropped on your head when you bring this one West nonsense, this Hebrew Israelite nonsense of really most varieties in here. Um, the Bible just gets dropped on your head because it's against the actual narrative of Scripture. We go back to Abraham. He promises to bless all nations through him. Then we see the one who's the child of promise, and ultimately it points to Jesus Christ, not just Isaac, Jacob, but to Jesus. And you got to read the scripture through to see this. Not even just the David, but the greater son of David, and that's what he says. So this is what we look at. So you got the whole wrong definition in the first place. So it's not a bad thing to be a child of God. It's just you don't get there by being born to the right parents. And guess what? Right. That's why you guys of the One West variety, and, you're, and I think your name indicated you were, you teach that Judas gets to be up in the kingdom having slaves, whipping people's backs, even though he betrayed the Messiah. And Jesus said about him, it'd be better if you were never born. But you guys get to say, oh, yeah, yeah. And when a Hebrew Israelite commits blasphemy... You don't know what to do with that because you you believe all Hebrew Israelites, by your definition, are saved. And yet Jesus, what's he say about blasphemy? Unforgivable sin. You don't know what to do because you've got this ethnic universalism you've made. You're just saved by race, not by grace. Mm -hmm. And so when someone, you don't even know, that's why your whole definition of what a child of God is is backwards. You don't even know what it means. So that's the problem right there. But, uh... Yeah. So, hey, the great show, great stream. Thank you for doing this. There's more to cover in this as usual, but we got to jump out of here. Everyone, listen, I dropped my first newsletter today. You can subscribe to it. I'm going to drop the link in the channel right here. And I encourage you, please, to sign up. I'm going to try to make it a weekly thing. I'm trying to get more professional, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of hard. I don't really want to grow up and mature. I just want to be, you know, (laughs) uh, a young idiot my whole life. But uh, I guess uh, the Lord won't let me. He's basically telling me through various means, nah, you need to step your game up, son. And so I'm trying to work on it. So there, sign up to the newsletter right there. And also look to the blog. And I did drop a blog about this. And I encourage you guys to peep it out. So shout out to the live chat. Thank you very much become a patron and subscribe to Phil Fox with that we gotta go and uh, Hebrews like stay off the reservations and if you go and they don't accept what you believe don't whine about it and call them racial slurs come on